But let's talk about something we talk about a lot on this uh, station, and it is low traffic neighbourhoods and the war uh, on the pedestrian, the war uh, on the car driver, the war on hospitality as well, because we're about to speak to Clint Pugh, uh, designer and restaurateur uh, up in uh, Oxford. He happens to be the father of Florence Pugh, uh, which must be a wonderful thing for him, uh, but he's not very happy because Oxford Council have basically committed what I would regard as economic crime against his businesses. They've made it impossible for people to get to certain parts of Oxford because of these low traffic neighbourhoods. They've made it so difficult for people to park that they just don't go and use local facilities and amenities anymore. And this is happening all over the country. I said it would. Once they started putting cycle lanes into London, once they started putting these LTNs into different places, ULEZ zones, it's happening everywhere. Um, and Oxford is one of the worst places for it. Let's find out now what's going on there. Clint, a very good uh, morning to you. Welcome. Good morning, Mike. Thank Good you morning. so. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. You've been a guy uh, in Oxford running several um, bars and restaurants for for many many years. Tell us what Oxford Council have done and how that has affected your business. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I've been running restaurants on the Cowley Road for thirty one years. Um, I opened Cafe Coco back um, back when it was very run down area, mm. and uh, I've been subsequently spent thirty one years trying to improve the Cowley Road and trying to make it to the into the vibrant space it is now. Um, I'm fortunate I'm a designer, so my my places and designs of restaurants are uh, obviously very different from most people. Um, but what the county council have done is they've closed one point two miles of connecting roads to the Cowley Road, where well, mm. there's over two hundred businesses on there. Um, and of course, the other sad thing is that the majority of the um, owners are English is their second language. Yeah. So they're, they're too scared to stand up and actually uh, stand up for themselves. Yeah. Um, and of course, I'm extremely vocal. So yeah. um, that, good. That we, like, we like that. We like vocal people. Well, yeah. it, someone's got to say something. Yeah. I mean, it's tragic. I mean, what's happened is you've, you, you've, we've lost the early evening economy, uh, the late time economy. People just aren't coming. Mm. And. Um, it's uh, it, it, we didn't really realize when they first announced that they would they, we had I, I remember it was during COVID that signs kept appearing during in the uh, uh, in the letterbox about this proposed LCNs. Now, right. none of us even knew what they were. Right. Um, so by the time they actually had instigated la a year ago in May, um, it wasn't until a few months later we realized the actual devastation it was actually having, mm. you know, so. We, we're, we're now on the back foot trying to actually deal with it, but the councillors still haven't bothered to come and see us. Um, nobody consultates, has a consultation with the, the businesses. There was no business assessment. Um, and, of course, it's basically suck it and see, yeah. and, that, and that's where we've been left. But this is the trouble because their policies all seem to be driven by this kind of almost um, zeal that they have for kind of being anti-traffic and being anti-car driver and being anti-pedestrian almost as well because they don't seem to take i mean this is happening all over britain in yeah. I, I, I i go to sussex a lot kent as well there's a lot of places down there where you can't park in the high street anymore so you yeah. know surprise surprise a lot of the high street shops are closing down because there's yeah. no footfall and you, exactly. you know i don't understand how these councillors can work in a place and take no account of the local economy well, I don't understand where their conscience is. I mm. mean, I, I can understand the idea that we want to make a greener, cleaner Oxford, but mm. why choose this one road? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the most vibrant road in Oxford. It's the, got the largest percentages of businesses in it, apart from the centre of town, of course. Yeah. But we have another problem in the centre of Oxford, is that the Oxford's been completely destroyed by mm. the creation of the Westgate, a whopping great shopping centre that was probably 20 years out of date being installed. Right. And many, many shops on the high street and the core market, main, main important roads in, in uh, the centre of Oxford, uh, the, the shops are all shut there as well. So whether or not this is a drive by the council to try and encourage business on all economy to move from the Cowley Road down into the centre of town, oh, we don't know. We have no idea. Mm. The, but the, it's the way they've implemented it. I mean, it's like as if you've got a bunch of students or A-level students with black felt pens just eradicating areas of business. Right. It's not... I mean, I wouldn't mind if they did it properly. If they, you know, they've painted... They've, from what I gather, they spent over £3 million on painting white lines on the side of roads, pretending that they're cycle lanes. Now, these are not safe. Right. They're, they're making a false sense of security. They've taken away car parking. Um, and it... And it's 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 it, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it, they, and they're not even readdressing it to see. Look, we've made a mistake here. I mean, they've said they're not going to introduce any more LTNs in Oxford. Right. But what about dealing with the problem you've already created? I mean, surely you, you're supposed to actually, you know, if you you see the damage it's being done. I've lost hundreds of thousands of pounds. Many businesses have already closed down, and it, it's only going to go one way. Well, one but of your one of your bars has been repossessed, hasn't it? 
It has, and I spent four hundred fifty thousand pounds building that. And I'm a designer, and I literally, I spent put a lot of energy into it. But of course, it's become it's ine inevitable that with what they've done, it's 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 very difficult to maintain and keep your businesses going. Don't forget, we've all just recovered or mm. trying to recover from COVID. Yeah, um, we obviously have an inflation problem caused by um, the Russia invasion of Ukraine, um, and and. Uh, I, it's just the wrong time to mm. have done. So I mean, it's like they sneaked it in at a time when we weren't paying attention. Right. Um, but even so, even now being called out, um, I mean, there's one. What we had a. They're, they're trying to actually instigate a thing called a bus bus gates, where they're going to segregate Oxford into uh, these segregated six or five or six areas. These like 15 well, minute one, city one, things, right? Yeah. You know, one councillor actually voted against it. Um, and he's now been removed from the committee. One Labour councillor, um, Mark Largo, um, I mean, which is a shame because he's also been silenced. Yeah. Not, I've never been able to speak to him subsequently. Mm. Um, and you think, well, hang on a second. This is this is just unfair politics yes. now. I, I tend to think that local politics should be... It shouldn't be political. It should, it should be should more be inclusive. Make, they should at least be consulting with local well, business exactly. people. And everybody, of course, yeah, exactly. Um, and we've even there've been even low tactics. I mean, there's a chap, a council called Andrew Gant, who's head of the roads um, committee. Right. And he even accused me of being a liar when I called him out at a meeting to say, or called everybody out right. to say that one councillor has bothered to come and see right. me before the instigation of the LTNs, and then he called me a liar. Mm. And, and, and how dare these people who basically work for us, who are paid for yeah. by taxes, who are paid for by us, operate like these little tin pot dictators? I find well, it exactly. extraordinary. They, you know, they have, yeah. You've they, got a, I think you've got a sign up outside one of your restaurants. I think we can have a look at it um, now, which they're trying to get you to take down. I think well, I've already taken. I've had taken it down because I had to replace it with another sign that I was um, advertising one of my, my children, Toby, Toby Sebastian. He had a concert in Oxford, but right. this was a sign I had up for. Uh, I put it up in November, right? Um, and then subsequently, a few months later, I got a uh, lo letter from the Oxford City Council, right. not the Oxford County Council, demanding I take it down because they said I haven't got advertising for that board. Well, that board's been up there for the whole 31 years that I've right. been on the Valley Road. Um, they so, are so obtuse when they want to be, aren't they? Well, it just seems it just seems rather strange, isn't it? You know, here I am trying all on. If you actually, I mean, obviously, the your the uh, guests at the moment, can, uh, viewers cannot actually see the sign, mm. but basically I called them out and said, look, this is what's happening, this is what's going to happen, and everything I said on that sign has mm. come true. Everything. Yeah. And, uh, it's, um, and it's a shame that Oxford City Council need thought that they should then interject to try and actually defend Oxford County Council for their appalling um, treatment on the Cowley Road. And yet it's not just the Cowley Road, there's other areas around connected to it. Right. You're going to think that if there's 200 businesses on the Cowley Road alone, um, there's other businesses around the area that are all being affected in the same way. Yeah. Is there anything you can do legally in terms of, say, um, getting together a kind of class action suit to say, look, this is cost costing us an awful lot of money, you're continuing to charge us the same business rates, presumably they haven't gone down, um, Nothing. and you've affected our profits by 20%, so now we want the money from you. Trouble is, of course, that's our money, isn't it? Well, exactly, and, and of course, the, the, the trouble is, yes, there has been money raised to actually try and do legal... Um, um, uh, uh, try to have like, contest it mm. but nothing yet we've managed to uh, be able to do it but it, it seems to be that um i it I, what's weird is, is the fact that this is happening all over the country mm. uh, and the fact that the local citizens don't seem to have an opinion see we we were even asked oxford oxford was asked to fill in a questionnaire all the citizens see whether they wanted this and mm. it was actually categorically proven that we the majority of people didn't want it right. uh, because it hadn't been thought out properly yeah now the saddest thing is, we then discovered that this committee meeting that happened in November, where they were going to vote through the bus gate section, was going to be the next devastating thing to happen to Oxford. Mm. It turns out that the council had already decided it before, so it didn't make any difference what we actually said in the questionnaire anyway. Yeah. So they say, but they pretend to listen. Now, Oxford City County Council is still saying that um, they want us to give us their, our opinion, but they're not listening. They don't yeah. care. They're not going to do any. It doesn't make any difference. You know, they they are stuck in their ways. They've made a decision. Um, it's very much a bit like my, my mum used to say. You know, don't do as I do, do as I say. Yes, exactly. That and presumably, the congestion has not been affected at all oh, by what they're doing. No, but it's obviously uh, people's traffic uh, journeys now are sort of three or four times as long. Right. The pollution levels in areas of Oxford are actually illegal now. 
Um, this is what I understand, that some of the, the, these discoveries were actually hidden and not actually talked about. Mm. Um, you know, and you've, I mean, there was a, a member of my staff went to collect his children from Cafe Coco to go to an area called Blackbird Lees, which is about a mile and a half up the road. Uh, maybe two two miles at the most, and it took him three and a half hours to go there and Jeez back. Christ. You know, this is coming down from Headington Hill, where Brooks University is, down towards Cafe Coco, which is a stretch of probably half a mile to three quarters mm. of a mile maximum. Often take people over an hour to travel by bus. That's I mean, it's isn't? absolutely ridiculous. We've got people. People aren't just aren't coming because they just can't get there. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Well, listen, we wish you luck, Clint. We'll keep in touch because um, anything we can do uh, to harass the council, obviously in a completely legal and, and manufactured yes, way, we will, we will do. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, Clint Pugh, designer, restaurateur, uh, father, by the way, of Florence Pugh, the actress, um, who's absolutely at war uh, with Oxford City Council, who threatened him uh, with all sorts of horrible things, including fines if he didn't take that poster down, which he has now done.